634 concerns continued this morning in Kaneohe after a Navy aircraft overshot its landing, ending up in the water. Chris Latronic joins us now live from the Windward side with a look. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Christine. Happy Aloha Tuesday, everybody. Right now, weather a little bit better here over Kaneohe Bay. As you can see here, a little bit better visibility, but that was a different story. Uh, yesterday, with a P-8 Poseidon Navy aircraft that went down in this area. So as I step out of the way, you can see uh, the light, the blue light, Coast Guard monitoring the situation. The good news is nobody was hurt. The nine people that were affected got to shore safely and unharmed. And this all happened around uh, 1 to 2 p.m. yesterday when the weather other effects were really uh, very, uh, very significant and uh, they and overshooting their landing. Uh, so we did get word uh, from uh, Peter Foreman, who knows that there is ways to find out exactly what happened. Well, you know, there's um, cockpit voice recorder, there's data uh, from all the instruments on board. So uh, they can go ahead and they can put together the scenario pretty, pretty well. So they're going to have a pretty good idea of what should have been done instead. And we're going to keep you updated on that report once it comes out. But now the biggest concern is just a big, uh, like a th 737 Boeing plane just sitting on a reef here in Kaneohe. So to tell us more about the community concerns is a local resident here. Uh, this is Dustin Leandro. Good morning, Dustin. So uh, tell me about waking up and uh, seeing a situation like this here in Kailua. Tell me about the conditions were pretty uh, different from yesterday, from today. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, yesterday was rain. I mean, heavy, heavy rain, very uh, low visibility. Um, I'm no pilot, but judging from the direction of the plane, it obviously was coronal winds, and that's why they're, they were coming down the runway at the opposite direction that they normally do. This is our backyard, you know what I mean? So, obviously, we're a little bummed about the situation. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, hopefully they can contain it and clean it up good, and I'm glad nobody got hurt. Yes, uh, so uh, the area that it landed, you're pretty familiar with this area. Tell me uh, kind of exactly where it is, and uh, is it affecting uh, fishing spots, places that a lot of locals go to? Well, we don't know yet, obviously, but uh, my favorite fishing spot's kind of right around the corner. Um, you know, I go there pretty regularly, so hopefully, hopefully not, but... I, I, I believe the military will take care of it. Yes, and uh, being this big plan, how do you think uh, extraction, other concerns that you have? You know, I'm in the construction business, and um, it's going to be a job. I mean, it's going to be a very big job. So it's going to be kind of interesting watching them, you know, if they're going to take it apart, if they're going to be able to crane it onto a barge. I mean, really just, it's going to be a big undertaking. <laughs> right on. Uh, thank you for your vibes, Dustin, and uh, giving us a little bit more perspective from uh, yeah, the buddy. Kylo community. So it's all happening right here, and yes, well, there's no timetable on the removal. Right now, they did, I guess, uh, as soon as the, the crash did happen, the military put on booms all around it to make sure that none of the fuel uh, really leaked into other areas. Uh, as I did some research, uh, this plane has around 10,500 ca uh, gallon capacity for fuel, as well as other materials so it is concerning for the community as Dustin just said but we're going to keep you updated on all the effects and, and as we learn more throughout the day right here on k 2 k 2 com make sure you download our app to get push alerts this is Chris Atronic working for Hawaii right outside Kaneohe Marine Base sending things back to you